Welcome to the Successful Thinking Podcast, where I will share with you the elements for a successful thinking process and we'll talk to people who have a successful thinking mindset. Hello, how are you guys? Today, I will talk about the base elements that define the thinking process. I bet the first thing you do when you wake up is to check your phone. Am I right? But why? Why do we check the phone first thing in the morning? To check the time? Any message we were waiting? Instagram? Facebook? The weather? Even if it's not the phone, for sure the second thing, if not the first thing you check, is to look at the time. What time is it? This is because information is key for every decision we make. We always want to know what's new. And that's why we look to the phone first thing in the morning. We want to understand if we are on time, if we are late for work, there's any news. Even in small villages, information is what moves people. Everyone knows when something happens. I don't know if you already had that experience. I had. I remember really well when I was at my grandmother's house. I remember I was a kid. We had a night where I was feeling sick. I, was, I think I was with fever or something, but I remember I was sick. Next day, in the house next to us, they were like wishing me to have a nice recovery. I'm like, but I did not even talk to you. But they knew. That's because people want to know what is happening. People are worried about the neighbors. People are looking about those who are next to them because that's the kind of information they can receive. So for my theory of successful thinking, it's important to understand that information is the key element that triggers the thinking process. A funny fact here. Did you know why the feed on social media is refresh when you swipe down on your phone, in your screen? I don't know if you noticed, but the feed does not automatically refresh. It refreshes when you swipe down. And if sometimes even say swipe down to refresh or something. The thing is, it, this behavior of swiping down is copying the behavior in the casinos when we push the lever down. That's because when in the casinos, we play, we move it, push it down to get a new game to go for a new round, because that's addictive, something new. Same on social media. We fresh it down because it makes us feel addictive to new information. And that's the, the action we have to do. But that's exactly, we will fr push it down because we, we will swipe down because we want to know what's new. But coming back to my theory, so when we also get this new information, we have emotions and our behavior can change upon it. Our behavior is a reflection of what goes in our minds and how we interpret this information. For example, when you get to know something good, you get happy. You smile and you, you jump out of joy, depending on if you get much very good news or not. But the same happens when it's negative. When you hear something sad or anything, you get sad. So this means we have a human reaction to the information we receive, even when we stay indifferent. Being indifferent does not mean that we don't react. This means that our brain does not read the information as something relevant or important for us at that moment. It can happen, even happen that that moment information is not relevant and moments after, oh, that information was important, now I can use it. Therefore, when we have new information, we have to consider our behavior as a reactive element. So what is behavior? Behavior is the way that a person acts in a particular situation or under particular conditions. Within the behavior, we also have communication because when I get to know something new, I can either keep it to myself or I can tell to other people. Like I'm in a village and people know they will communicate to the others. And communication is the act of communicating with people or sending a message. So knowing this, we just need to understand the connection and how the thinking process is established. For example, in the, in the communication, it's also interesting to understand that depending if we keep it or not, it's our decision to share that information with others or not. And we have plenty of ways to communicate. There are at least 7,000 languages in the world. And even, even when we don't understand each other, different languages, we always try to find a way to communicate. A long time ago, or when we started to communicate in long distance, it was via smoke signs or even designs on the wall that was a different way of communicating because of the art. Art is also a way of communicating. Today, we talk, we communicate via smartphone and with emojis. 
And now, for example, I'm talking to you via this podcast. So I am communicating to you. So how now does this, uh, the thinking process is built? Where does it come in this process? So the thinking process comes right before our behavior response. So as soon as we got new information, we start to think about it. And later on, depending on the thoughts, we behave, we react. So my goal is to make you aware that in order to have a, a successful thinking process, we need to be aware that our thoughts are built upon the information we receive and of course leading to behavior that reflects that interpretation of the information. And the key to have a successful thinking process is to understand how to filter and distinguish the information by being relevant or not. Selecting the right information allows us to make right decisions. So coming back to the example of when we wake up, I would say that time is relevant information. It allows me to understand if I'm late to work, if I woke up earlier and so I, I can still sleep a little bit more. But checking the feed on social media is not relevant <laughs> unless you are a social media manager. <laughs> But even that is only relevant to check the feeds once you are at work because you are only getting paid at work, not at home. Well, now with remote work, okay, but that's a different conversation. So yes, the time is something that is relevant because it allows me to understand, oh, if I'm late, I need to speed up. If I'm on time, I can sleep. And that's my reaction. And as Mahatma Gandhi said, action expresses priorities. So this is because actions represent our behavior response to what we define as important. And that's it. My action is to speed up if I'm late. Send a message to my boss saying I woke up late, that's it. Or if I want to do something, I will do it because it's important. Because if I don't do it, it just shows it's not important for me. So over the next episodes, I will focus on this. I will talk about other elements that allow you to understand your behavior, our behavior towards certain information and how to understand the different steps of our thinking process. So hope you enjoyed and see you on the next one.